Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. I'm here today to talk about Black History Month. The month that is a celebration of my people. Because I am a black man and everything. And it's about all our accomplishments. Um, all the oppression that we have gone through over like centuries um, of living in like America and stuff like that. And even till this day, we are still being oppressed. And so I'm here today to talk to you about certain characters or TV shows or episodes that revolve around Black History Month that I personally enjoy. So I'm here today to talk to you about Static Shock was a cartoon superhero series that ran from 2000 to 2004, making a total of four seasons. This was a really huge thing back in the early 2000s for a lot of reasons. One, this was one of the most popular DCAU cartoons of their time. Also, it highlights that of a solo black superhero, a teen superhero, Static, but most people just call him Static Shot because of the cartoon series name, is the main protagonist of this series. He is based off of the Milestone comics um, created by Dwayne McDuffie. Dwayne McDuffie sadly passed away and Dwayne McDuffie is like he worked on several DCAU projects such as Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, Batman Beyond and several others. And so the WB uh, wanted to make a cartoon series that was, you know, diverse. And so they came up with that of Static Shock based on Dwayne McDuffie's creation and he got to be the... Um, showrunner of the show as well milestone comics was very unique because it highlighted black superheroes they were later bought out by dc dc has not really done much in the fact or in the sense of incorporating them into live action Till this day, there has never been a static like live action tv series or movie or um ion and so a lot of or rocket like ion and rocket and stuff i only know of those two because of the young justice cartoon series ion and rocket was incorporated in the young justice um, cartoon series mainly that of rocket but not so much that of ion and so it's quite a shame even static was incorporated into the young justice cartoon series because it has been about, oh, it was about 20 years or so until Static reemerged in the cartoon series, and that of Young Justice, after this series got canceled. And so, the other characters that I mentioned have never been in live action. And people have been wondering, hey man, like what's up? Like how come Static has never been in like live action? To this day, nobody knows the answer, but most likely it has to do with the studio assuming that, you know, nobody's going to gravitate towards that of a black superhero. I mean, look what's going on today. Sam Wilson is the new Captain America, just like he was in the comics and just like in the comics. The majority of the audience is white and does not like that. We now have a black Tinkerbell for the brand new Peter Pan and Wendy movie series that's coming out on Disney Plus, um, I think later this month. And like always, older white men have lost their minds. Do you really seriously think they care about a fairy? Think about it. Grown men, grown white men are, 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 are angry and pissed about a fairy now being black. Think about that. And it's not like she's never been another race before. She's literally been silver before in another, in another live action movie, but nobody complained. And when it comes to that new Peter Pan movie, what they don't know is that the new Peter Pan is Mexican, but they think he's white. And as soon as they realize that, they're gonna hit the fan. <laughs> <laughs> and so like and i say the reason why like you know mo well, one of the main reasons probably why we've never seen a live action movie or television series of the milestone comics is because 
comic books on um, media is mostly watched by that are white people. Sure, there are also other races too, but the mass majority of the people who watch and buy are white. So they kind of feel like, you know, they ain't gonna care about that or uh, they're not gonna gravitate towards that. I mean, look how long it took for Black Panther to get his live action movie. And as great as that movie was, there was still controversy from groups of certain people talking about, oh, they talking about this movie's not for us and everything and blah, 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 blah. Ah. And not only that, but look at the third act of the movie. The CGI was abysmal. Why? Because let's face it, the studio's probably like, ah, ain't nobody gonna watch this movie. Ah, ain't nobody gonna care about a black superhero. Little, little did they know, people actually did. So in the second Black Panther movie, they upped the budget for the CGI. And that budget and the CGI team didn't have the time to work on the CGI in the Ant-Man Quantum Mania movie it's been reported and stuff because they wanted to get the animation and the CGI to be on the VFX just right for Black Panther because they knew they screwed up in the first movie because the first movie made a buttload of money to the much surprise of that of all those executive producers and stuff and so like uh, also, you know, the Milestone Comics, they was tied up in, like, you know, legal battles for a good while, so that was another reason, but DC now owns them. They can do whatever they want with them, but they choose not to, and Michael B. Jordan has talked about making a static movie, but who knows if that's going to happen now that James Gunn has taken over, because James Gunn has not mentioned any part of that, and, you know... Even the WB, to an extent, probably thought the same way Marvel did with Black Panther because when you watch Static Shock for those four seasons, you'll realize something very interesting. The first two seasons had an animation style completely that different of the third and fourth season. The third and fourth season animation resembled that of other DC properties such as Batman, Superman, Justice League, and Batman Beyond. And so, why was the animation in the first two seasons very crappy? Like, it is literally shocking to see that type of animation. I haven't seen that type of animation since the 80s and the early 90s. There is no shading whatsoever. It literally looks like um, they got the cheapest animation company they could to make Static Shock Season 1 and 2. Now, there are two episodes in Season 2 that has a completely different art style similar to that of season three and four but drawn in the style of season one and that has to do because one of those episodes had batman in it and of course they wasn't going to have batman in there with no shading no contours and stuff and so i bet you anything if it would have been one of their other superheroes they would have had some really killer animation because that's what they've done and all those other superhero shows that i named batman um superman justice league and batman beyond they made sure they and even what was it called um the legion of superheroes they made sure they had good animation for those for their predominantly white superhero shows the only other superhero show that got crappy animation was that of the zeta project and that's just because it was kind of like a backdoor pilot thing not many people knew about it and i still to this day have never watched it but i did watch the um, backdoor pilots and you know the batman beyond cartoon and stuff and so but the first two seasons of static shot the animation is almost kiddish in everything and it's just kind of like what were they thinking and thank god it improved with the third and the fourth season because it looked so much cleaner so much better there was a maturity to it and not only was there a maturity to it but the character himself evolved also the storylines evolved one of the craziest things about static is its depiction of storytelling i have never seen a cartoon series be this deep and evolved in the way it has it deplores everything from black oppression to gangs to like um kids in high school dealing with like drama this is very much in the first two seasons was very much personal story driven and that of a high school setting something you never really see with a teen show 
when Spider-Man the Animated Series came out, he was not in high school. He was in college, and you saw very little of that college. Another um, X-Men Evolution, a couple episodes, it dealt with like, you know, teen high school drama, stuff like that. But then as time passed on, it moved away from that. Same thing with Batman Beyond. The first season of Batman Beyond, you saw little high school stuff. And then the creators realized that. So for the second season, they crammed in as much high school stuff as they could, but then abandoned it once again in the third season. And so this was very unique to see many of the problems happen in that school. Why? Because of the teenagers. Static was a teenager and his best friend, um, Richard Foley, was also a teenager. And it dealt with a lot of the personal things that a lot of teenagers went through because a lot of their villains were teenagers. That's one of the great things about Static Shock. Very rarely will you see an adult villain in the show in the show a lot of his villains were actually made for the television series a lot of them from the comics did not show up but a good number of them from the comics did show up like um puff but puff got redesigned and also race bent the show race bent a couple of his characters a few just to, you know for like to make it that urban setting of the cartoon but a lot of their white characters still showed up as well such as hot street and that one allen dude who was like a business mogul type person um and stuff their races remain but puff was redesigned to fit more in with like the style one neat thing about static shop is that it's urban depiction you actually saw black characters look like black characters with black hairstyles gone was the short like buzz cut um or or um shortcut hairstyle they had more like dreadlocks micro braids long dreads they had like afros they had tiny afros they had like um puff she had like buns but in the form of little bun puffy afros and stuff and you know not only that but a lot of the female characters like the older ones was drawn with like hips and a big butt why because that's just how a lot of um black people are and also hispanics because there are also hispanics in this cartoon but not only that but there are also white people and the cool thing about it is that a lot of the black white and hispanic characters listen to a lot of urban music and they talk in urban slang in this show why because in communities that are urban it doesn't matter what race you are a lot of the people there speak in urban slang it doesn't matter if you're black white asian hispanic that's just how a lot of them talk and this show depicted that which was really cool and also people also you know was depicted speaking in other like you know ways too very proper and stuff virgil is a very proper person but he has a little slang in him too um what's his name richard Foley. i think it's richard foley is it um yeah Richie and everything. Um, he talks in a very proper kind of way, but he also talks in slang as well. And it's because of where they grow up and everything. And I really like that. You normally don't see that in the depiction of a cartoon that has a black character and stuff like that in other superhero shows. Another thing that was great about this series was the soundtrack, which they never came out with. But the music in the background was amazing. It was everything from um, rap to like R&B and like really soul type music and stuff. People to this day want a soundtrack, but never got it. All those other cartoon series got it, but not this one. Like one of the best songs in here is the original intro music and the third season intro music and also the um, She's So Fly when Shebang comes in and stuff. And so like, even though this is based off the comic, it was redesigned for that of a modern day audience. The family depiction is slightly different. And here Virgil's mom is shot dead before the events of like the first episode. She died five years ago. And so in the comic, she is very much alive and their family is very hectic. In the show, the dad is like an outstanding type dude. The sister just gets on his nerves like a typical older sister. 
This is something Dwayne McDuffie did not want. He wanted to keep that family dynamic from that the um, comics, but realized that it did fit the mold of the show very nicely. One of the things about Static I never really understood is who is his main protagonist? I mean, antagonist. Like, who is his Joker? Who is his Lex Luthor? It's never truly ever been truly described that in the comic, and even that of the cartoon series. But in the cartoon series, I guess Ebon could be considered his main protagonist, kind of, I mean, antagonist. But you really don't really get that because it's kind of a combination of Hot Streak and Ebon. But in the comics, it was a bit more of Hot Streak because Ebon did not exist. Personally, I think Rubber Band Man should have stayed a villain and should have been his primary antagonist because those two have a lot of heat. Even though when e uh, Rubber Band Man turned good, those two still clash and everything. And so, like, another thing this show delved into was racism. There's a scene I've already talked about when Richie's father, who's white, does not like black people. Also, there's a scene where Virgil's dad, new girlfriend, is a cop and she pulls over Virgil because she thinks he m matches the description of the people that they're looking for and stuff. This is racial profiling and it came from that of a woman of a um, color herself. But she only shows up in like two episodes, so they didn't really make that much of a fuss about his um, new girlfriend. Now, like I said before, one cool thing about this series is the dynamic of who the villains are. They're teenagers. See, there was this chemical explosion called the Big Bang. Um, the chemicals gave all these people their abilities, mostly teenagers, because they hung out around the docks. And there was like a gang war that was going on around that time. Very rarely do you see an adult with Big Bang type powers in their thing. It was mostly just the young people. And so that really resonated with the younger audience. This show was very popular with a younger audience um, because a lot of people in here are actually teenagers and stuff. In fact, even though this show was um, mainly pointed towards like a black audience, everybody loved the static cartoon of all races and all ages in fact like i said before it was one of the highest rated cartoons of that time um next to that of pokemon and of course pokemon was a juggernaut on the wb kids um to the point where batman and superman got canceled because of pokemon now when it came to that of like this even though season one and two had high ratings it got an even bigger boost when they introduced Richie as a superhero, a delayed bang baby and stuff. He became gear. As a result, that fans gravitated even more to the show. Some people would even say the third season is the best of um, all the seasons. I think season three is extremely good. Um, it was cool to see Static have like a... Um, superhero pal and everything like a sidekick and everything somebody he could bounce like you know jokes off of and this and that and it was cool because those two were best friends and richie also would help him out in season one and two the reason why this change was made was because Dwayne mcduffie said it was hard to write richie into the show where he had to help out static without bossing him around so they decided to make him into a meta human the only problem is it just happen it didn't gradually happen like with the whole barbara becoming batgirl and batman the animated series that was gradual we saw her learning her skills as um before she even became batgirl here richie just became a superhero in the eye of the blue i will say even though he was cool and everything as gear I still prefer like Virgil doing his solo missions because the show is centered around him and it's supposed to be centered around that of a black star. And the fact that they had to add like a white superhero in the mix, which boosted the ratings, which what got them their fourth season, he said. It was even to the point where Dwayne McDuffie was thinking about making a Richie Gear spinoff series and everything. Or making it more like, you know, the two of them teaming up with Shebang in like a um, new adventure, the Batman type thing. However, what did cause this show to get canceled? Well, simple fact, toy sale. They were at an all-time low. That's the same thing what happened with Young Justice. Young Justice first two seasons were great. But it got canceled only because toys were not selling. That's the only thing that these networks care about. Toy sales. If the toy sales aren't good, then it's getting canceled. And 
The thing about static is that when it dealt with personal things and more high school relatable stuff and villains, you got that emotional connection with like the characters, similar to that of Batman, the animated series. A lot of things that made his Rhodes Gallery the way it was, was the fact that these people felt jaded. Um, bad stuff happened to them and they became a villain. With Static Shock, his villains became villains only because they was hanging around the docks and they got exposed to chemical gas. Now the chemical gas in the comments is called the Quantum Juice weird name <laughs> but like you know the chemicals that made these villains these were just normal kids and teens and the thing is that they became a lot of them became villains instead of superheroes because some of them like hot street from the comments were just a bad boy bully all around ebon was a gangster and his brother rubber band man was a jaded like uh rapper and everything who wanted to get ahead in life but couldn't and so decided to use his powers to like hurt people and but rubber band man became good because he fell in love with virgil's sister and everything and after that he became a vigilante and so like a lot of his villains, like there's one kid who has a stepbrother and his stepbrother could care less about him. But once his stepbrother finds out he has power that can create anything from his imagination, his stepbrother starts to use him. And so the little boy assumes, oh, my stepbrother now loves me and respect me. So I'm going to do whatever bad thing he wants only because I want to be loved. And so that's the kind of personal stuff I'm talking about. And then there's another one where a girl really wants to be student body president, but nobody's paying attention to her and they start laughing at her. Once she realizes she can control people's like thoughts and everything, she starts to turn evil. She wasn't evil to begin with, it's just that bullying at school led her to this. There's a very emotional scene that doesn't even really deal with no metahuman. It's just that of a regular teenage boy who's getting picked on and bullied. It's the season one finale in which Richie gets shot with an actual gun because they live in the hood and everything and you know kids are the way they are they start to pick on him and so he has finally had enough where he decides he's going to defend himself at school with a gun Virgil and Richie are trying to make him stop and they do for a while he ends up making good friends and all this other stuff until that bully persists and so when that bully keeps persisting um this is when he decides to take the gun and shoot that boy only to shoot Richie by mistake. This upsets Virgil because he has to have counseling for this because Virgil's mom in the series died from a gun wound and everything. She was a paramedic. And you don't see this in other superhero cartoons. You never see that deep emotional feel. Not even so much in Batman and animated series. We know Batman parents died of guns. We know he hated guns. But you never got that actual episode where he saw a person with the gun and it traumatized him. Static was very traumatized in that entire season finale episode. And so like, um, other like, you know, troubled kids were like this one guy who was, you know, a thug and everything. He was beat people up. He was still and this and that. So people always assume he was just a typical bad guy. And so in the one episode, there's like this Hulk like character. And this person keeps like wrecking everything. And so people assume it's him because all the places that were targeted was places that like he either worked at and got fired from or something. Turns out it was his ex-girlfriend who set him up for the fall because he dumped her. And the lesson was you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. And that's what people kept doing with this one character. And the thing about I always loved about this series, it felt so real. One thing about X-Men Evolution is that that was the first time ever I thought to myself, oh, this is what it's like to have mutant powers and be a teenager. I never got that with any of the other X-Men um, series and stuff. With this one, it really feels like you took people out of the real world, put them in a cartoon, and they're living out their lives. That's something I never got from any of the other superhero cartoons. And so, 
Another thing this thing dealt with was like homeless teens. There's this one girl who has like claws and everything. And she is a home uh, and she uh, ran away from like home because of her superpowers. And it's then she went to Gotham City and some of Batman's villains tried to use her for her powers. And so all she needed was a, a, some counseling and how to control her power. But there is one actual homeless girl who had weather powers. And the thing is, she's literally said, you know, when you're homeless, especially uh, no matter what age you are, because she's a teenage homeless girl, people just look through you and everything. They don't try to help you or nothing like that. And that is the honest to God truth. How many times have you passed by a homeless person begging for money and you gave them nothing? A lot of times it's hard to even tell if they're really homeless or not because sometimes they will scam you and stuff as been reported on the news. So people tend to just like walk past them and not pay attention to them. And so like that's something that Virgil had to deal with when trying to help this girl who kept freezing stuff. And the thing about Virgil as a superhero is that he just wants to help people. He had a great upbringing uh, with his family and stuff. And that was something that was different from like, the comics, but he literally just wants to help anybody and everybody he can. He is literally the black Superman and stuff. Not Superman, but the black Spider-Man. That's how he was intended to be in the comics. He was like a version of Peter Parker and everything. Accidentally got his powers, dealt with a lot of teen drama stuff, and always helping people and always was friendly with the um with the um quips and everything. Unlike Spider-Man, who people think is a menace, people in his community love him. The cops love him. The news reporters love him. Only people that hate him are the villains. Another character who was created for the show was that of Talent. Talent we don't know much about. We know she's a Latino girl. And when she got her power, she turned into that of a bird. And she hates her appearance. She can fly. She's super strong. And she also can make sonic waves come out her mouth. It's only at the series finale when she loses her powers, she doesn't want them no more when they try to give them back. And it's like she wants to be a normal girl. You gotta stop and think about this. She was a beautiful young girl who turned into a bird. And so as a result, she turned into a villain when she got her power because all she could see was her ugly appearance. And this one, and Ebon, like, prayed against that and everything. I will say, I really do like the villains they created for the show. Ebon is a really cool character. You really feel like, you know, he was a gangster leader of the past in the way he talks and the way he acts and how he tries to control everything. That is how he is. Hot Streak is just like his name. He is a hot streak. But I'm surprised they didn't do much with, like, you know, that character. He barely shows up in the show when he shows up a lot more in the comic and stuff. His father, when he got kidnapped in season four, he got um, saved by Static and he realized something. Why would the villains kidnap him just to get at Static unless Static was his son? I mean, come on, Virgil, you should be able to tell who he is. He has these huge dread braids and everything. <laughs> and like... And there's even one point when his sister almost figured out who he was. And so this one girl knew who he was. And she's all, and Ebon's all like, man, lots of dudes wear their hair like that. So nobody never put two and two together. And he doesn't even change his voice. And he makes lots of jokes, just like the um, Virgil Hawkins does and everything. And so he never really hid his appearance that well, even though his costume was really cool looking. But his father always had an inkling that, you know, he was a superhero in real life and everything. Um, so it was kind of like the Aunt May thing, because once again, you know, he is based off of Spider-Man. And Phil Lamar voices that of Static. And he even said, reading his comments, he always thought of him as the Black Spider-Man and everything. And so, like, when Gear gets his powers, he gets, like, really, really smart, where he can create anything. His outfit is more like sports gear and stuff. And he has a backpack, a mechanical backpack that can, that's almost spider like, that can do anything uh, that he, his mind can like link up to and stuff. And he was a cool, like, you know, sidekick, but it took him a good while um, because when he became a hero, him and Virgil were kind of like, you know, at each other's throats because 
Gear, you know, Richie was all like, hey, man, look, I got powers, too, and I can do this and that. But, you know, Static was a solo dude and everything. And so it caused problems until Static was kidnapped and, of course, Gear had to save him. This is when Static's identity was almost exposed. And so both Gear and Static costume changes throughout the series. In season one and two, Static is wearing a costume very different from that of his original comic book costume. Um, I'm so glad they gave him the TV show costume because it's just cool. It's like a, it's like regular clothes. It's like a trench coat, goggles, a mask, some like um, um, biker gloves and everything, and a really cool shirt and pants. But the first season, first two seasons outfit was very colorful. It was blue, yellow, and white. Once they got better animation and stuff like that, in the third and fourth season, his outfit changed to a black, blue, gold outfit, and it was stylish and everything. So much that the comics have incorporated that look and everything. And so, like, with Richie, his first costume was two shades of green. Um, a light and a dark but then once it got into the fourth season it went to that of a muted green and a silver um white almost i prefer the season three look better the, the two greens on each other that silver and like you know or that white and light green just didn't really look well and so of course virgil's clothes changed from season um one and two from that of three and four and richie clothes only change in season four i don't like the color scheme of richie but when it comes to Richie, he's actually an amalgamation of like three characters in the comics. Rich Stone um, and Frida. Frida was also in the show, just like she is in the comic, but she's different. In the comic, she's the only person who knows um, Static's like true identity and everything. And in the show, she's barely seen and she's just a high school girl who does not know that that's the um, Static and Virgil are the same, but she kind of had a hint at one point, but doesn't think that um, they are. I don't know if they will love interest or not in the comics, because I know in the cartoon series, he has a thing for Daisy. Daisy mostly hangs around with Frida, but she mostly also hangs out with Richie and that of uh, Virgil. Now back to Richie. Like I said, he's an amalgamation of Rick um, Stone from the comics. Rick is actually gay in the comics. They could not do this in the early 2000s. So Dwayne said he just put like an earring in Richie's ear and stuff, which is kind of offensive to people who only wear one earring or one ear who's male and stuff. If offensive to the point where they think that, you know, because they have that earring, they must be like girly gay or something like that. Not offensive because gay people is not offensive to be gay. Like, heck. Y'all know that I support LGBT, so that's not what I'm talking about. But anyways, um, but Dwayne McDuffie said that he, in his mind, pictured Richie as being closeted in the series. Because he said every time he's around a female, he acts like all big and bloaty, like he likes them. But then when he's around just like guys, you know... He's all up like Virgil's button and everything, always like the biggest bromance there is. And also when he plays sports, he's not very good at it. And but honestly, I can't see it. Whenever I saw him talking about all the girls he likes and this and that, I just assumed it's all the girls he liked this and that. But apparently he's closeted in the cartoon series, but they were never allowed to allude to that. So if there were to ever be a live action thing, most likely he will be gay. Will he still be Richie or will he be Rick? Who knows, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, they're two different characters and one is an amalgamation of the ones from the comics. And so, but him and Richie are really great friends. Richie will do anything for him and everything and will help him out whether he's a superhero or not. And so, like... In this cartoon series, one thing they did was interesting was to prove that, hey, DC Comics actually owns, you know, Milestone Comics. So they started to incorporate other superheroes. One of the people they incorporated in the second season was Batman and Robin, and the Joker shows up. And this started to be a norm where the season premiere, starting with season two, started having Batman appear. And the third season, Batman appears, but no Robin because he's with the Titans. And also Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy show up. In the third season, old Bruce shows up with Batman Beyond Terry McGinnis. But also Dick 
um, Tim Drake's um, Robin and also Batman show up as well. Now in the comments now that they bought them, Static and the uh, Tim Drake Robin hang out a lot. And this is due to, of course, the cartoon series where those two like talk because in this series, this is around Batman started being his butthead itself because he was based off of the New Adventures version. And so at one point, Tim Drake in the uh, fourth season was kind of like, you know, he, he, he just can't take it no more when it comes to that of uh, Bruce being so grumpy. Instead, it tells me, you know, man, you're lucky to have this training and experience one of the greatest heroes there is and stuff. And so like... The Justice League also shows up, minus Superman and Wonder Woman. And so Brainiac shows up, and this is the weirdest thing. It doesn't feel like it's set in continuity, right? Because I don't never remember any of this crap happening with the Justice League cartoon where they had a piece of Brainiac on Earth and tried to get rid of it and stuff. But basically, he infects Backpack and he assimilates Richie and he's trying to assimilate and digitize everybody else. This is weird because he never really did that in the Justice League cartoon until he actually started to and stuff. And But for the most part, they all felt like each other's characters and stuff. But it just felt like a weird continuity. And then so there's also a solo episode I talked about last year about Green Lantern showing up. Then there's an episode called Toys in the Hood where Superman finally shows up. Drawn in the um, Superman animation style but voiced by the Justice League um, actor who um, voices Superman. Tim Daly did not show up. And so it was weird hearing George Newborn like voice with the animated series style it was just a weird mashup and everything but basically toy man comes in and then his assistant comes in and she tries to um steal daisy's appearance and all that which made for a really interesting episode but it was just weird hearing george voice with the tim daly design and but wonder woman for some bizarre reason never once showed up in the static shock cartoon However, I will say this when it comes to Batman. The Batman cartoons were kind of cool because, you know, static like Batman and stuff. And so um, Batman was being his stuff and stuff, but he had a couple of weird designs. Like he had the new adventures design and costume, but in the first episode, he had the Batwing from that of the, um, the animated series. Then in the third season, he still has his new adventures style, but he's having the Batwing from the new adventures now. And then weirdly enough, in the Justice League cartoon, he has his Justice League costume on in appearance. And but then after that, they have another um, new adventures type thing where um, in the fourth season where he's back to his new adventure style. So the continuity is like all over the place when it comes to all that. And I felt like, you know, it was cool when the third season came up and static was you know mixing it around with like other dc heroes it felt like he graduated you know what i'm saying he was much more of a mature well thought out hero um and stuff but it was still weird how wonder woman never showed up now one thing that was odd when you started hearing hip-hop music in a batman cartoon it just didn't mesh well and everything it just didn't sound right for some bizarre reason and you know it's similar to how like superman and lois they have like hip-hop music playing around and this doesn't match right with the country setting and stuff and so like in the batman beyond cartoon we get a glimpse of an older static he's about 60 or 70 but yet his hair is still black and he doesn't look old his costume looks more like a batman beyondish type style costume and apparently static is one of the greatest heroes of that time era and cobra has kidnapped him only for the batman beyond version and static to team up to rescue him and everything static wants to ask him all kind of questions but he doesn't have enough time in that version he seems more mature and like you know then his jokey counterpart now what's odd is in the justice league unlimited series static reappears again as an older man but 
he's much older. He now looks like a 60, 70 something year old man with now he has long dreads that are gray and his costume is completely different to where it resembles something that of the animated series from the static show and everything. Also, his personality is a lot different. It's more the jokey thing. And he doesn't seem like the greatest hero of all time. So it's weird they reverted back to that. However, it did deal with alternate um, future events. So it could have been like an alternate version um, and stuff like that. When it comes to Static's personality, he's very jokey like Spider-Man, like I said. But he also has a stubborn streak to him. There's sometimes where he likes to showboat around and everything, and it can cause somebody to get hurt, and in fact, it does. Um, but for the most part, he is real rounded and his powers can do just about anything. It's not electrical power, it's static electricity, but it mostly looked like lightning bolts, and it's in the form of purple. I like that. Purple was the color scheme for a lot of these metahumans that got the big bang and everything. Either their skin would be purple, or they would just wear purple clothes for some bizarre reason, or their powers was kind of like come out in purple. That was kind of like the color scheme of it, and I like how it sets that apart, because normally he's depicted with blue lightning, and like, you know, comics and stuff and so but one thing a lot of people don't really realize he's very smart he takes his science classes even though he doesn't pass them all the time he takes them very seriously and stuff because every time he uses his power sometimes you always wonder well how the heck did he figure this out like really quick that he can his powers can do this and that and he explains that he did something like this so it can be a positive and a negative and blah 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 and static cling da, 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 da. and that's because you gotta realize when you go back to the season one and two he, he's always in science class so he's actually a very smart person now in season three and four that whole high school setting kind of starts to fade away. Also, the personal relationships with the villains kind of fade away and they become more generic type villains and stuff. And not only that, but like the family dynamic kind of fades away as well. You see his sister and father show up less in the series and stuff. This is when the show started to gradually change and all this and that. Um, also, with like, you know, the intro change. I love the first season and the third season intro. Um, just the graphics and like the music. Um, season two music in the intro was weird. I liked the graphics. It was a whole lot better. Season three, Little Romeo started singing the intro for three and four. And then in fourth season, they only added a few new scenes to be different from season three intro. But season three and one intro are the best. Now, celebrities actually appear in this as themselves. Once again, you don't see that in most cartoons. Shaq appears, AJ McClain from Backstreet Boys appears, um, crap, oh, Lil Romeo, of course, shows up to, um, play, like, um, himself, and he's, like, a huge fan of Static. Now, of course, when all these celebrities show up, of course, they mix it in with the bad guys, and they kind of get away, and they kind of scuffle with the bad guys. Little Romeo actually does a really good voice acting job and everything. I'm surprised he hasn't done that, because we don't hear much from Romeo as a rapper that much no more. Um, he does act in live action, but his live action stuff isn't always that great. I actually thought that Static was going to show up in Smallville back in the day, because Lil Bow Wow... Not, not, Oh wait, I'm, I'm, crap, I'm getting him mixed up with um, Bow Wow. Never mind. <laughs> it's Bow Wow who can't act. <laughs> and everything. I'm getting all these little people mixed up, man. Like Lil Bow Wow, Lil Wayne, Lil Romeo. I thought Static was going to show up in Smallville when Lil Bow Wow shows up because, um, the episode was titled Static, and not only that, but the black actor who plays the Red Ranger in Power Rangers SPD has dreads, and he was in that episode as a cameo, so I thought, oh wait, he's going to be Static, but no, it wasn't. It was just a regular um, Smallville type episode with no Static in it. And so, but yeah, back to little Romeo, he does a really good job at voice acting. I don't know what the world he's doing now. Um... Let's see, um, season three, then four, this season one and two. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. Um, oh, Danny Phantom. Danny Phantom is very similar to Spider-Man, but he's more similar to that of Static Shock. Danny Phantom was a superhero cartoon that came out on Nickelodeon. Why it's so similar to Static is both of them get their powers by a mistake. 
both of their clothes or just whatever they was wearing um regular old clothes for their superhero costume both of their sisters are in college and are psychology majors um and they both have these plucky type jokey personalities and these really cool powers and fly around so it's really um cool to see the influence of static shock in other cartoon series and stuff also his best friend wears glasses is a nerd and helps invent all kind of stuff and is very smart very similar to richie foley from that of static shock and also danny phantom's best friend is tucker foley and in static you know richie foley so yeah butch hartman really looked at static shock and was all like hmm i can make some millions <laughs> But yeah, the Static Shock cartoon was like amazing and everything. He was a great superhero and not only that, but he was a great influence to that of young black kids because, you know, mostly they just had like white superheroes to look up to. But for the first time, they had a black superhero team to look up to. Now, one thing they did not do in the cartoon series was have him team up with that of Black Lightning, something they do in the comics pretty often. But instead, they created their own superheroes. Soul Man was kind of like the Black Lightning of the show, an older superhero who had the same powers as Static. Anansi Spider was an African superhero when Virgil and his family went to Africa to learn about their roots. Something you will rarely see in a cartoon series, because if they ever do go to Africa, like in Justice League Unlimited, it was just to fight the gorilla, um dude gorilla grot or what his name was but anyway um a nazi spider was of course based off of the ancient legend of the anazi a trickster and everything sometimes he's depicted as like a trickster prankster other times a hero other times an evil person like in the gargoyle series but here he's actually a man who wears a zorro like costume and has all these amazing um, um powers of like you know illusion and stuff and then there's shebang somebody people love a lot I think her name was Charisse, and so basically she came to Dakota City, which is the fictional place of where Virgin um, live at. And so she was just a regular girl at school who started, people started liking her. She was really good at bowling and all this other stuff, but her parents were very strict, did not want her doing anything. She was a superhero by night. She wore like a regular tracksuit looking outfit with a cape and a bandana for a mask and she could flip around with ease and everything. And she was super strong and can run really fast. And so she lied to Static saying that she was a bang baby. Turns out um, she's not. She's actually a human that was created in a lab. Through like dna chromosomes and stuff like literally a test tube baby and stuff who was giving powers but the the government people was looking for her and her family now these aren't her real parents they're just the scientists that created her and took her in they won't like you know they basically took her from the lab and so they want her back and they want to make others and stuff so static helps and save her but the family could have put in um protection witness type thing so in the next time she appears um her she thinks her family's been kidnapped and then her parents turns out there's another scientist who helped worked on like you know the formula that made her the way she is and stuff and so he forces her parents to like help him steal stuff because he was exposed to some type of like chemicals and stuff that makes his body very dense he's very strong and he can absorb stuff and so like this is when gear showed up so all three of them are trying to like you know fight this dude but he's too strong for them but he ends up collapsing the building um that he's in and keeps falling down 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 and so the third time they appear her family is now out of um witness protection and everything and they can start living normal lives and she wants to be part of like static and gears team because both of them said next time she's in town she's more than welcome to join they said that they did not mean that <laughs> because she starts coming in and trying to change everything about their hideout location like put curtains and this and that trying to change the name of the superhero group and all this and that it's to the point where static gets really rude with her and lets her have it and this is where his stubborn streak comes in and his rudeness and stuff 
which is very rare so it hurts her feelings and all this other stuff and so but she still helps out to fight the bad guys and once again they're all like oh anytime you're here you can like hang with us but she never shows up again after that because she kind of got the hint the first time because she was being a bit obnoxious trying to like change everything about them but she was a really cool like female hero that was created for the show and she had a cool like theme song called she um she's so fly that people still love to this day and there was slightly a slight romance that could have been hinted between her and Static, but nothing ever came of that. Another sensitive topic that this show tackled was illness. Rubber Band Man revealed in season four he has dyslexia. And that is where you see words and stuff backwards. This is very rare to hear on a kid's programming. In fact, the only other time I've ever heard about this in TV in general was Power Rangers season three of Mighty Morphin and stuff. And you never hear about dyslexia, not in children programs, not in adult programs. You don't even hear it like in the regular conversation around town. This is just a topic that's never, ever brought up. But yet this kid's cartoon decided to bring it up to give awareness to it. A very interesting episode in Static Shock is towards the end of season three when he goes back in time. See, he met a meta human named Time Zone who has the ability to go back in time. And so he tries to prevent the murder of his mother who was shot by a bullet when she was trying to help the innocent during like a gang war type thing, these riots. Well, during the riots, she got shot with a bullet. And so that's been established ever since the beginning of the first episode of the first season. So when he goes back in time, however, he saves his mother from a burning building that's about to fall on top of her. What happened to the stray bullet, I wonder? Like, why all of a sudden is now a burning building? Well, in this episode, he reveals himself to his mom and tells her, you know, just stay on this rooftop. He'll handle the riots and everything. And so this version of Virgil is a little bit older than the one she tucked into bed. So she agrees to stay on the building, but she gets called on the dispatch thing to help the innocent. And being a paramedic, paramedic, she wanted to save people. So she left the building and she went and rescued people. As Static is about to now go back forward in time and everything, he sees his mom out and about and he is worried. When he's back into the present, all of a sudden, like, you know, he goes home looking for his mom, but he can't find her. He was unable to prevent her death. He was unable to change time. As a result, he is heartbroken by this. This isn't a strong emotional heart um, tug on the heart that something you rarely see in a kid's superhero show and is much appreciated here in this show now ironically he did alter time a little bit his father tells him his mother the paramedics say before she was like wounded and everything she kept rambling about like how her son's a superhero and how she's so proud of him so in fact he did able to change time just not the way he wanted now how exactly she died the second time is unknown maybe she still got hit by a bullet most likely time played out to where you know um this was always supposed to happen and perhaps he is the one responsible for his mom getting shot by going back in time like a time paradox type thing it's never truly been explained beyond that point in the series finale however it kind of ends on a cliffhanger see there's this scientist who came up for a cure for the big bang babies and stuff big bang baby the bang babies <laughs> <laughs> and everything and so he put this stuff in the air so everybody can breathe it nobody knew about this until a certain like bane baby started to change back into human this is troublesome because he didn't even ask permission for people who wanted to keep their powers and static and gear of course have powers because of the big bang Richie is now starting to be less smart and back to his done with itself and Virgil is starting to lose his powers and so so are the bad guys Talon turns back into her normal self and so does the kangaroo dude and some of the other ones Ebon does not like this so he goes and he finds a scientist so he can find more um, chemicals that made the big bang 
Because of this, now him and Hot Streak and Talon are starting to feud with one another. Talon does not want to be a meta human no more. She wants to stay human because she gets tired of looking like a bird. And so Hot Streak, we don't know what's really going on with him, but he doesn't want to help Ebon out either. And we finally get to see what Ebon looks like before he turned. And so it turns out Ebon let some of the gas out. So, but turns also out that um, Hot Streak. He wants to make his own um, meta breed gang, uh, like Bang Babies and stuff. So him and Ebon fight throughout the episode, and they're both exposed to the gas, and they merge together. Static and Gear, they got a whiff of it too, and Static is more, more powerful than he ever was before. So Ebon and Hot Street, they merge to a two-headed monster-looking thing. Static does the unthinkable. It seems like he murdered both of them just to get rid of them and everything because it was at the point where he could not stop them. So he just took them both out by making the boat explode and everything. They are seemingly dead, but at the end, you can see the water spiraling around the way Ebon's power does. And you see a flame shoot out the water. Maybe it's them. Maybe they survive. Both Gear and Virgil think that, or both um, Gear and Static think that maybe they survive and everything. However, what about everybody else who was on that boat? The other former metahumans and stuff. Um, like Talon, did she die? Did she survive? Nobody knows because it ended on that like bit of a cliffhanger at the end. So it never got resolved. Now you can watch this on HBO Max or you can buy it on DVD. Each DVD is around 20 to 22 bucks. Freaking expensive. The entire series, you can either get the individual disc or you can get the entire series for over $60. That's too much freaking money. <laughs> Especially when um, each season consists of like 15 to like 13 episodes and stuff. But that's the only way you can buy it and that's the only way you can watch it on streaming. So it's probably best if you just watch it on HBO Max because even though HBO Max is pricey, it's a whole lot cheaper than 20 to 60 something bucks. And so, yes, yeah, Static Shock was an amazing cartoon series that lasted for four seasons. It outlasted most of the other superhero cartoons that was around that time. It outlasted Batman Beyond. It outlasted Batman the Animated Series that later got turned into the New Adventures. It outlasted Superman the Animated Series. Justice League a little bit of a difficult situation because there's two seasons of Justice League and Justice League Unlimited because the network wanted more. So that's the only other one that ever lasted for a full four. Technically, Batman lasted for four, but it had to do a complete overhaul and change for its fourth season. It lasted longer than the Zeta Project. Um, it lasted, well, the, League of Super, uh, the Legion of Superheroes were never part of DCAU, but it outlasted that. Um, Teen Titans is the only thing it did not outlast. I think that got five seasons, but that was on Cartoon Network and not part of the DCAU. But Static was one of the longest lasting DC properties of all time. And it was a great cartoon for like everybody. Now, I'm sure if he was to come back today in live action, you're going to have that one group of negative toxic people going to be all like, eh. Look at them trying to replace our superheroes with this other superhero like they do with Black Panther. They will not shut up about Black Panther no matter how good of a movie Black Panther is and how much money it brings in at the box office. And it's quite sad to see that these people have turned this way and we all know who turned them that way. And so like cause they didn't act like this way before and stuff. And they are literally the Karens of like the internet. They're pissed at a black mermaid for the Little Mermaid movie. They're pissed at like a black Tinkerbell who is a fairy. They're about to be pissed at the Mexican Peter Pan, and they're still not sure yet. But they're about to be pissed at the black, oh not black, but the Mexican Snow White. And so like. It's a shame they don't want people to enjoy representation. Representation matters. This is why Milestone Comics was created because there was too many white superheroes. And Dwayne McDuffie saw that. And so he wanted to have people to look up to black superheroes. And people looked up to one of the greatest one of them all. Static, but now because of Mal Morales, who is Afro-Latino, he is kind of outshined Static. 
because you don't hear much from Static no more. After this cartoon series ended, like I said, it took about 15, 20 years for him to show back up on screen. And when he did, he was just a supporting character. But when he did, people was like shocked and amazed Static is back, but in the Young Justice format. And he's never had a live action movie. And not only that, but the comic books have changed his demeanor so much that some people don't like the new version of Static in the comics. And, you know, he was the original Miles Morales and stuff, and now Miles Morales has kind of like outshined him. And people should never forget about the OG Black Spider-Man, <laughs> which was Static and everything. Happy Black History Month, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye.